Is there a real person behind the narcissist mask? Who exists there? Who operates the mask? Was the potential that we thought we saw in the person part of the real person behind the mask? You're very welcome here today, guys, to this channel, Narcon, with myself and our friend Remy in the background. If you're on a speaker only or voice only, that's Remy, our mascot of the channel. So I would like to delve into this because if you get this, if you on your journey understand who is or was behind the mask of the narcissist you were dealing with, it will greatly enable you to overcome the cognitive dissonance and it'll actually totally expedite your healing and accepting this and a radical acceptance of who is behind the mask really, really helps in this journey forward for people who've been through this experience. So let's get into it. Just a brief explanation of how the mask is developed because that will actually correlate with what we're going to talk about in the middle part to the end of this podcast. So we all start out as children. We all have experiences that we absorb from the caregivers wherever we land on earth, whatever the situation is at the time. And we learn, just like we learn to walk and talk, we learn how to socialise with people. We learn how to get our needs met. Some people are born into very abusive circumstances, learn how to get their needs met, but also develop empathy and others don't. So I'm believing myself that it's a choice at certain times in life where we do have intervention of good people. And as children, we choose either not to look at that intervention, not to accept it, or to believe that the other way is more powerful, where we see someone being powerful and in control of us, and we decide we're going to be that person. We're going to be the controller. And that, I believe, is where narcissism is born. And then the outside validation that the child receives if their manipulation way is more successful, they then choose that route. So that's just my theory on how narcissists develop. And I also believe that when we're born, we have a genetic disposition towards a certain way of being, how our personalities form and who we are. So that taken into account, how does it actually then develop from that point on where we're actually going down that route if we're a narcissist and how does that look? So the narcissist as a child will use this method of getting their needs met in relation to manipulating people, um, trying to control people that are in control of them and trying to gain a control secretively of adults by manipulating them. The other way that this develops and progresses is the narcissist adapts various character traits from other people. They see, oh, you know, that, that child over there is crying and is saying somebody hit them and the teacher is being really nice to them. Hmm. And this is subconscious, but also a conscious observation. And they understand then how this teacher in particular can be manipulated and operated. And without laboring the point, this goes on into adulthood with their partners, with their intimate partners. Oftentimes, narcissists will take on the character traits of a new source of supply and people that are that know them, family, even their last partner will be astounded at this narcissist suddenly becoming, say, a vegetarian, suddenly you know, becoming a, a, a Buddhist, someone suddenly becoming a Christian because their partner is. And it's actually amazing to see. And it's very validating for the ex-partner to see these changes because they are a diagnostic tool of narcissism along with a bunch of other behaviours. So it makes progress. It it learns, the narcissism learns how to attach people to themselves. So they don't actually get involved. They don't um, become intimate with people. That's 
not seen as a strength, intimacy is seen as a weakness because in their, the forefront of their minds, being intimate with someone and being kind to someone and giving to someone is going to get you into a lot of trouble, is going to attach you to someone and make you weak. Instead, what they do is they attach people to them by saying, what works with other people? What do they like? What can I do that will attract them to me? How can I control them? I can see that they're getting pleasure from that. Now, if I withdraw the pleasure, will I then get them to do what I want? So it's a whole development process. What's real about the narcissist? What's real about the narcissist is what they're born with talent wise. So they're, if they're good looking, that's real. If they're an athlete, that's real. If they're a musician and a talented or a talented art, artist or author, or authoress, that's real because that's an innate talent, physical manifestation, talent of who they are. So you can take that as real. And that's the confusing part because some parts are real, but the, the engine behind the physicality isn't who is presented to the world. That's the false mask. But certain parts of the false mask can be taken as real. And in your healing journey, it's great to actually write down what the narcissist or how the narcissist manifested. I mean, charm in itself is a, is a character trait, is an attribute. And if you've seen charm operating, charm is as real as charm can be. So if you actually draw a picture of the narcissist you were with, and attach these, these were real things that you experienced with them. So that's the real part. Now let's delve into behind the mask. Okay. The emotional maturity of the life force behind the mask is of a young, underdeveloped personality or brain. So we have essentially a life force that drives this false mask, that uses this false mask to protect the inner self from any kind of hurt, pain or destruction. Unfortunately, a narcissist's mask when threatened becomes not just a self-defense mechanism, but becomes a very offensive mechanism. And that's wherein and therein lies the problem. Also, the life force behind the mask can't maintain stability and cannot self-regulate. So all the functions that the mask provide for the inside internal life form are done in the outside world and the mask is fed and the internal life force is just driving the mask. That's all it does. So I'm just trying to get into who's behind the mask. So basically what you've got is the child has grown up and has learned how to be an adult and has cognitively learned what adults do. So presents the functions of an adult to the world. But the reality behind the mask is not adult. And this is how it goes. So I'm going to say, I'm going to give you a few expressions of how the thing or the life force behind the mask actually feels and thinks at an emotional, immature level. And please don't feel sorry. There's not a little child hiding behind the mask. This isn't a little child. This is just a, a life force that stopped developing at a certain age and used like a form of artificial intelligence or a hologram to operate in the world. And that's the extent of their personal development. And that's the extent of what they can offer in a productive manner to the world. It's not productive. It takes, it destroys, it steals, it adds on bits of other people. So as a person, it doesn't develop. Now it might develop as a public persona. It might have a function. It might actually even do good in the world in some regards, but it will always be not motivated by doing good, but motivated for self-aggrandizement or aggrandizement and gain. 
and it will destroy people in its path. So what's going on in the back? Who's who's operating the mask? It's a person who's saying, I deserve I deserve this. If you can imagine yourself or the, the, the life behind the mask in a kind of toddler or five year old or seven year old capacity. So the cognitive functions have been learned as to how to present to the world. But the truth of the way the life force behind the mask and then therefore the way it directs the mask and operates it is essential. This this is essential to understanding why this person that presents as an adult then acts in a very un-adult and immature and inconsistent way. There is no stability. There is no consistency because this is what's going on behind the mask. And that may help you if you think and you are still in cognitive dissonance about the fact that you were dealing with an adult and the fact that you think you can still have a relationship with this person. You're essentially taking back, if you go back to the narcissist, a vindictive, immature life force. This is what's going on. I deserve this. I want that. You're mean. You're mean. I want that. I want it and I deserve it. Why aren't you giving it to me? If you can imagine this toddler-like essence, presence, interacting with a parent or someone they see as stopping them from having what they want. I'm first. I was first. You see the toddler essence in a family where there's maybe other children and they're all called in for whatever. And the narcissist or even in the schoolyard is saying, no, I'm first. It doesn't matter about them. I got here first and I should be first. I'm not talking to you. You didn't do what I want. I am not talking to you. Silent treatment. These are the, the things that are going on behind the mask. And this is the emotional intelligence that is driving the mask. So when you see the adult doing these weird things, this is the real self. This is the true self that's motivating the hologram. I'm not talking to you. What does commitment mean? What does that word mean? I've never heard that word before. Oh, I've heard that word, but I don't know what it means. You want me to have commitment? This is the five-year-old you're talking to. You're saying, but I, I expect we got into this relationship and I expect some commitment from you. That's what we would expect from each other. They haven't a clue. Commitment is outside their range. It is not something that they do. They feed off you, but commitment staying with you no 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 that concept is for adults what does commitment mean can you spell that word for me i'm not doing that i'm not doing that anymore it's boring it's boring commitment is boring those things are boring why do you want me to stay and help you and do this i want to go and play Sorry, guys, I'm just checking on my notes. OK, here's the next one. This is boring. This toy is boring. I want a new toy. I deserve a new toy. I want so I'll get. It's not fair that you don't give me it. I'm going to go and find one. She gave me that. You won't. You wouldn't do what I wanted. You wouldn't play with me. You wouldn't give me the pocket money. She's going to do that, so I'm going to go play with her. I'm going to go play with him. They're not mean like you. I'm not going to talk to you anymore. These, these are what's driving the mask, guys. It's this that's going on in the background. This is the real self. I'm not your friend anymore. So without, again, labouring this point, I know you get where I'm coming from. Your expectation of the hologram or the adult that's presented to you is never going to come about. Now, the hologram and the adult 
presentation of the life force behind the mask may certainly trick you and may learn the words like commitment and may learn again it's learned behavior it's not genuine it's not authentic it's not stable it's not consistent and it is not going to last it doesn't last with you and it doesn't last with anyone and if you see a narcissist in a long-term relationship that person is suffering that they're with that person is looking after a life force that is emotionally immature and it is not a sustaining reciprocal normal relationship it's an interaction of a very switching parental child role in my opinion a narcissist is in formation like an embryo that hasn't actually developed into a real human being into a human being that it has the potential to be but it's never going to actually fully become fully human because it lives in a fake way with a very immature life essence it also never developed a conscience it remained a detached form in itself it could therefore never be blamed or never be held accountable also and this is something that i have found quite interesting with a false mask there is a knowing in the narcissist's part or a knowing that when they go into customization mode is the way i describe it when they're targeting someone the character traits that they display are used to attract that target or victim and because they vamp those character traits up they know that they're doing that for that particular victim so they know that they're not being real or authentic and the fact that the victim believes it is hilarious to them and i've seen this and i know a lot of you have too when the narcissist mask has dropped and they've revealed themselves to you and i know that's why we search out this information because we are basically insulted that there is a type of person that is that fake out there and the fact that they have received pleasure from tricking us into believing that they were something that they were definitely not and this is also feeding into the immaturity of the life force behind the mask in thinking this is hilarious because everything everything is a game to the narcissist so there's also a twist to this in that if you're in the narcissist mind now stupid enough to play make-believe with the narcissist then you deserve whatever however you fall down or whatever pain you're in because you're so stupid to believe that the narcissist is real and that the relationship was real and therefore the more they do to you like as if you're playing a game in the garden where you're both bandits and you're fighting each other so if they're winning in the game and you're showing a lot of wounds they've just won they just think they've won so you played the game so they justify themselves in your downfall and say well you knew you know you knew we were playing a game even though you don't you believed in the game and you took part in it so the outcome is your fault and i'm not accountable for it you you bought into the false mask and you wanted all those things that i gave you and you took them so if you're in pain now and you know re, you, you know using recriminations against me for things i did well you were in the game so just because you're the loser that's the mentality that's going on behind the narcissists false mask and one other thing i'd like to say please be aware that narcissists even doctor narcissists 
and psychologists, narcissists, are narcissists. So be very careful with the intelligence and guile. Take the good out of what they say, but be very careful about the twists in it, the twists and turns. Always use your discernment. Believe in yourself and believe in your intuition and believe in your gut feeling. And don't just go along with people, even just don't go along with me. Make your own mind up always. That's essential. Use the intelligence you were given and assess situations in your best interests. And I don't mean that in a narcissistic way. I just mean all is not as it appears at different times in life. And getting this knowledge, getting this knowledge is a life saving thing for all of us. So just remember, with cognitive dissonance, radical acceptance of who you were dealing with must come for you to progress on your healing journey. Once you understand that there is no hope of having an adult relationship that's going to be wholesome or fruitful or reciprocal with this person who you were formerly in a relationship with, understanding that is your freedom. I leave you with that today from a very sleepy Remy in the background. Um, and I will see you again very soon. Please take care of yourselves, guys. And thank you for your support. Thank you for sharing, by the way. Um, you know, YouTube, sometimes uh, they will always give analytics and sometimes I look at them. And there was loads of people sharing the videos, which really helps. This is what I'm doing now for my life. And I love this job. And thank you so much for your support. And also, thank you from for some very generous donations I've received recently, which is really helping something going on in the background. Bye for now. See you again soon.